Rick Show. Here. It's a nice warm night, too. In fact, it'll get warmer as we go, but don't let us stop us. Let us have a really good night. Some nice questions, some easy answers. Who could wish for more? The money's quite nice, too, but before we start, for better, surer protection, choose Protex soap. Its antiseptic has been proved far more effective than others in common use. To work, to work, and it's nice and easy tonight. One at a time, you come up. Get ready, if you will, so that you're, uh, you're first, you're next, and so on. And no names, no anything. I'll just ask you a nice, simple little question. And if you get through that, of course, you get another chance. If you get through that, you get a big chance at the end. Do you like the big chances? I do. Those are the ones. Now, this is very, very simple tonight. This little quiz to start off with. You get five shillings if you get it right. Take a Protex soap as well. Nothing if you get it wrong. Protex soap. We always give that away, but just back to your seat. Or you might get a chance very much later on. Am I worrying you? That's the main thing. Right, of course. Now, it's a little quiz that we've called impossibilities. For example, name a foot on which it's impossible to get a corn. And you would say 12 inches. Very clever? Very clever. Right. First competitor, and I'll give you... That, that won't be the one. This is a different one. Name a pen with which it is impossible to write. Pen name. A pen name. <laughs> well, yes, but uh, that, that'll pig, do. Pig pen. That's better. Pig pen, yes. That was swill. <laughs> uh, swill. <laughs> right up close. Name a suit that can't be worn. A lawsuit. <clears throat> Quite correct. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Name a table from which you can't eat. A table which you can't eat? No, not a table that you can't eat. All right, a table you can't eat. A table that you can't eat from. Yeah. That's it, yes. A table from which you can't eat, yes. You don't want a question, you want an argument. <laughs> <laughs> a table, can't a eat. table from which you can't oh. eat. Turntable. That'll do fine, yes. I had timetable, but one good turn deserves it. Around this way. <laughs> Name a ship in which it is impossible to sail. Companionship. Companionship, that's very good. That's very good, yes. Name a coat that you can't wear. A coat that you can't wear. In other words, any sort of a coat that isn't actually a coat that you could put on. Undercoat? Undercoat. <laughs> well, yes, I suppose. An undercoat. You're thinking of undercut, aren't you? Oh, no, under, oh, I... Undercoat of paint, anything like that. Undercoat of paint on, on, on a... That's it. You couldn't wear that, could you? No, you couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Little Zeno, I painted our kitchen and I wore the undercoat. <laughs> I had it all over me, round this way. Name a case which it is impossible to pack. A case that you couldn't possibly pack. A law case. Now cut it out! <laughs> All right. You wouldn't get on my back, would you? Name a pin which has no head. A tie pin. A tie pin. That's got a head on it. Otherwise, it could be very dangerous. A different sort of pin. A pin that has... You a married man? No. No. Oh. <laughs> a pin that has no head. A rolling pin. That would have done. Ah, <laughs> uh, he was a single man. He'd hardly expect to know that one. Name a horse that cannot be ridden. Close horse. A close... <laughs> what? That's right, man. <laughs> Thought he was Athel Mulley for a minute. <laughs> he was the quickest fellow I've ever seen. Just whispered off, eh? Name a saw with which it's impossible to saw. Uh, mountain. 
I saw the man down the street. <laughs> and it's Mrs. Margaret Mitchell. Hello. Hello. I'm fine, thanks. Margaret Mitchell, that's a great name, you know, yes, isn't it? Yes, yes, an illustrious name. Isn't it? What did she do? She wrote Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind. Mm. Goodness me, I couldn't even lift it, let alone write it. That was the biggest <laughs> book ever. Are, are you a nanny? Oh, I'm a great-grandmother over and over again. You are? Yes. How many? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going over to Hobart to welcome the sixth great-grandchild. The sixth great-grandchild? Yes. Uh, if, if I can get there, I'd love to. What makes you think you won't? I, I, I don't know. I always, I, I've never tried to get on a show before. I always thought you needed intelligent people on the show. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I had to have intelligent people on my shows, not only would I have very few shows, but on top of that, I wouldn't be able to conduct them. <laughs> oh, it's no, just I we think... ordinary people that make the shows, really. Every now and again, somebody super intelligent stands out and makes it look pretty good. But let's face it, that we're all around about the same, I think, and we, we don't want to know too much. I think you can know too much and it can worry you. Well, the, the more you know in this world, the more work you get to do. My right? word, you do, yes. Do you like super latex for you? Cloud pink. I'll put that over there, and you tell me what you've selected out of your Dulux Super Latex color card. Flame. Flame. Calling all passengers traveling on TAA flight 411, VHTVG, the 10.20 a.m. Vickers Viscount service to Launceston and Hobart via Melbourne. Stand by to board the aircraft. Now, you're a little nervous. Stop that at once. Is Costa Rica an island, or is it on the mainland of Central America? Oh, well, it's one of the two. Mr. Davids, it's nearly 70 years since I left school. Well, that's not the right answer, but it'll do me. <laughs> Where are we now, Reg? Uh, we could have been, uh, you know, cloudy or something and couldn't have landed where we were going. <laughs> uh, we, we were in Cool and Gatter on Australia's famous Gold Coast, then they couldn't land, so they went straight down to Hobart. That's right! <laughs> Now, just don't overdo it. Just relax and take oh, it easy. Every now and again, we have what we call a jump trip. Oh. 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 Look at the down there at the back. Uh, that's all your friends and family? Uh, that's three of my daughters down there. Oh, I see. Oh, one well. of them is going with me to mind me. <laughs> oh, you'll be all right. No need for you to worry. <laughs> oh, that's Are you happy wonderful. now? Wonderful. Oh, I'm very, very happy. It's thank nice, you isn't so it? Much. Look, don't thank me. It just thank the Dulux Company who who did it in the first place, yes. and also TAA who happened to just make that a jump yes. trip and get you there. Yes, uh, a flying trip to Hobart. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe it's true. Have you been in a plane before? No, never been never. in a plane. Never. Never. Never spoke. Never met a mic before. You haven't. <laughs> and is that a new hat? Yes, that's an... That's what a night this is, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's perfect. All right, thank you, Mrs. Mitchell, and I'm so glad you could come in. Thank you, Mr. All righty. <laughs> Off she goes to a Yes, and I, I, I picked young John Howard. He's a nice sort of lad, and he's been here two nights now, battling away, and uh, he just hasn't had much luck. Hiya, John. Not bad, thank you, Mr. Davy. That's all right. What do you do for a living? Oh, I still go to school. Oh, you do? Yeah, what school? Canterbury Boys High School. Oh, that's... Right, let's get busy. In botany, a tree whose leaves fall in autumn is called a what sort of tree? A shedding tree. <laughs> I could not look you straight in the face, John, and say that it was not a shedding tree. Because there it is, busily shedding. So therefore it is. It's called a deciduous tree. But you've got the right idea. You've got 20 packets now.